Okay, so one thing was the organization. The other thing comes into place IT, information technology. The leading question for this session is uh, I would like to share with you what are IT solutions in HR? What can they do? How do they look like? Uh, I'd like to share with you what are the difference between expert systems, user systems. Um, what are typical functionalities? Yeah, what are typical functionalities in recruiting, in learning, and other areas? And what are future trends? So this will not be a big chapter, but I'd like to share with you some ideas which you really should take home. Okay? Uh, the first thing I would like to ask you to do is have a look, really, on a website of some of the major providers of uh, HR software. SuccessFactor was recently acquired by SAP. Very successful uh, uh, platform, a very successful uh, solution is delivered by Workday. Cornerstone, amazing. Yeah? Haufe Umantis, a German provider. Oracle, recently acquired a leading provider named Taleo. Yeah? Go to their website, really. That's my recommendation here. And have a look at what they can do. Sometimes you'll find also demo systems. You will find um, videos. And so it's just set to get a little bit of feeling what these kind of systems do. I mean, you all know what office systems can do. Excel, PowerPoint, and so on. Yeah? And maybe you don't have a clue about what HR systems can do. Would be good to have a little bit of understanding. Uh, one question in the last, the last HR uh, uh, exam was give an example of an HR software and about some functionalities. Yeah, easy. If I would ask you, give an example of an app and what the app can do, you can easily answer this mm -hmm. question. I would like you to also be able to answer this question for HR mm -hmm. software. When you look at HR software, you you very often find kinds of overall models like this, the overall, overall architecture, so to speak, of, of AHR software. Um, let, let me say some words about some of these components, because uh, this is a very typical example. Um, you can maintain your organization. Yeah? You have a system where you really can maintain your entire organizational structure. That's important because with this organizational structure you always can see which is the manager, who is the manager of whom. Why is that important to know in a system? Why is it important to know who is the manager of whom? Because managers sometimes make decisions upon what? About performance, appraisal, about salary about the approval for, for a vacancy request, all these kinds of things. So you have the entire organization mirrored in a system. Of course, the entire compensation thing. I mean, a pay slip is not calculated by hand. I mean, that's clear. It's not calculated via Excel. There are systems. Uh, one of the first solutions of SAP in that area in HR was really payroll. Yeah, uh, Calculating this monthly... Uh, um, Paces, you know? absence, manage the management of all the benefits, company cards, insurance, all these things. You need systems for doing this. Yeah? Um, performance here. I mean, you remember performance management, performance appraisal? Yeah? Employees are evaluated, reviewed on a yearly basis by the manager. This is done in a system. Uh, not on paper. In some companies it's done on paper, yes, but in modern organizations this is done in a system. Okay. Um, time tracking. Yeah. Uh, tracking uh, the, the uh, when do the employees join the company, when do they leave the company on a daily basis. Yeah. And then they have different UI. What is a UI? User interface. Yeah, user interface. Important term here. Yeah? 
they have a desktop maybe, they have also a mobile application, we want to talk about this. And so many HR systems are, are also, can be used on mobile devices. Yeah. Uh, you have analytics, you can do some tracking, controlling, we'll talk about HR controlling in one of our next sessions. You can, you can uh, calculate some indicators, key performance indicators, that's also part of these systems. Uh, you have tools to collaborate. Okay, so this is a very good example of a system that shows you the the uh, the uh, different components, technologies which are part of such a solution. Yeah. Um, now, I've mentioned employee self services. Yeah, some minutes ago, that's a very typical application. Employee self service, and this is a screenshot. Um, uh, of of uh, SAP mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. yeah, they provide employee self service. This is not an example for employee service. Uh, employee self service. I talk about it in a minute. Sorry, this is a system uh, developed by SAP. What do you think about mm -hmm. this screenshot? Yeah. That's the system more of the old days. But if you do an SAP course here, you will, you will uh, uh, recognize this. Yeah. What do you think about this screen? Huh? From what you can see here, what do you think this system can do? A lot, but probably the user doesn't find out how. <laughs> this system can do obviously a lot. Yeah. Can you use this system immediately? No, not at all. Are there systems which you have used in your life immediately? Huh? Give me an example of a system that you used immediately. IOS. Hmm? Apple's iOS. Apple iOS. Yeah. What else? Gmail account. Gmail account. Whom of you did a course, a training on how to use Facebook? <laughs> Nobody? How did you know how to upload a picture, how to create a profile? how to like something, how to post something. Where did you learn this? Try it out? And you, you succeeded? Interesting. So, for some systems, and that applies for most uh, mobile applications, the so-called apps, there are systems which have to be, uh, where people must be able to use the systems immediately. You see it? Okay, got it? Use it. Without, without any training. Right? We call these systems user systems. It's a user system. While this is an expert system. An expert, SAP always delivered expert systems, at least in the past. An expert system is, in most cases, kind of complicated. You need some training to be able to use the system. Give me an example of, a, of another expert system. A system that you can't use immediately, but where you, where you need some training, some support. Yeah? Photoshop? Sorry? Photoshop? Photoshop. Wonderful. Photoshop. Okay. It's to a certain extent intuitive. Can you can use it intuitively, but if you want to use it on an advanced level, you need some introduction. Also think about Excel. Mm -hmm. It's an expert system, Excel. Yeah, you can. Okay, making a simple, simple uh, table that's easy, but using pivot tables, yeah, using macros, mm -hmm. you can't use these things intuitively. You need some introduction. So, there are expert systems and user systems. Again, user systems are systems which users people, employees, can use immediately. Yeah? While expert systems are systems which are rather complicated, where you need some support, some training, experience, um, which is also fine. Yeah? Now, when we look at the world, we find that there are um, user systems 
and there are expert systems. Here we have uh, user systems, which are primarily used, by, by, used by, by employees, and we have expert systems used by experts. So, um, if somebody is doing, let's say, maintaining the payroll, there is an expert using the payroll system. A payroll system where you maintain the data of all the employees, yeah? Uh, that's not easy, okay? Um, also, if you, if, you, if you use systems, recruiting system for doing pre-selection, they are in many cases not that easy to be used, yeah? These are expert systems, while systems which are used by employees are typically user system. They must be able to use immediately. And some systems are more for administration and some systems are more for value creation. Let's give you some examples on this. And I, I'd like to stick to this for a while because I'd like to share with you some ideas what these systems can do. Yeah? I also want you to understand this. Well. What can systems do in this world? Right? Um, let's start here. What is master data? Have you ever heard this term, master data? We I mean, know let's share some fundamental terms. Master data, Stammdaten. What is a typical master information? Yeah? Your bank account number. Your bank account number. Your name. Yeah? Somewhere you have to maintain this information in the system. These are master data. Uh, master data management is more and more done by the employees themselves your home address, your bank account, your name, yeah. birthday. It's easy. <laughs> Doing a leave request. <coughs> you want to request some vacancies, <coughs> locations. So. You want to book a course. Yeah? You say, I want to do an English training. Uh, you enter a portal, find the right training, put it in your shopping basket, and you are registered. Yeah? Easy. Time record. Yeah? Some companies, you have a card, entry card. Whenever you pass uh, the entrance of the company, you check and the company registers. Okay, now I'm here. <laughs> yeah? Easy. T -t totally easy. You just need a card doing something. Yeah. While these are things, uh, payroll, I talked about this pre-selection. I mean, think about a company. You're getting tons of applications, yeah? And the idea is to really sort this application in the first step. You review the application in the first step. You have to look at the CV, uh, some information, certificates, so, and you make an initial decision. Should this applica applicant really pass the first step or not? Yeah? These systems are primarily used by experts, not by employees, <laughs> right? And it can be quite complicated, these, these systems. Also, when you administer the trainings, if you are a training, uh, uh, you are you are you, you are a professional in HR department taking care for all this training business, you probably have a system where you maintain all the data about the trainings in a system. Okay, internal mobility. What is that? Internal mobility. How can you support that people move from one division to another, from one country to another? All right. Uh, for managing these, you need systems. It's highly complicated. Well, it's not so complicated, but it can be complicated. It's planning interviews, scheduling interviews. You have to deal with managers, with recruiters, the applicant, managing all this. You have a kind of outlook system where you, where you do all this stuff, where you, where you make sure that the recruiters, the managers have the right material in advance to the interview. Yeah? All these kind of things uh, can be done with these kind of systems. But all these things are, are administrative, right? On the right side, we have things which are more about value creation. Value creation. People can maintain their skills. Yeah, you have a system where you can maintain where are you strong at? Yeah? 360 degree feedback. It's primarily done with systems. Online questionnaires which people can use immediately. Performance appraisal. Uh, managers have their app, yeah, an iPad, and when they talk to you, when they do the performance appraisal, they make their notes on the, on the, on the iPad. 
right? It's a very simple system. Um, when you apply, yeah, when you apply, then hopefully you don't need a course or any training to be able to apply at certain companies. You should be able to apply at a company immediately. <laughs> I know there are some companies where you might need some training to know how to apply there. Yeah. Oops. But it should not be, right? Um, doing an online training. You have a portal, a learning portal, and you do a training there online. That should be really easy. That's not administrative. Okay? Now, on the right-hand bottom side, you'll really find the advanced HR solutions, expert solutions for value creations. These are highly complicated sometimes. Uh, internal talent pools. Intern talent pools. You have talent pools about the former interns, which were really strong. Yeah? You have a pool of, let's say, 200 former interns in this pool, and you want to maintain a relation to these interns uh, to hire them sooner or later. Yeah? We talked about this, candidate retention. To manage this, eh, that can be complicated. Succession planning. What is that? Succession planning. To always know who is the successor for certain executive positions. Who will be the successor? Who might be the, succe the successor of our current CFO? if the CFO would leave the company. To plan all these things, you need systems. Doing talent reviews. Um, you might remember the performance potential matrix. <coughs> yeah? Performance potential matrix, which is used to, to, to classify all employees and to find out who is a high potential. This is done with systems. Yeah? Um, course development, of course, job posting. So here, this is a, not, not a complete, but this, this overview gives you a little bit an idea what systems are, are there and what systems can do. Yeah? With regard to leave requests, now here is, is a screenshot of an employee self-service. It's a typical employee self-service. Yeah? From my own, quite old, in my times at SAP. This is where you, how you how you request uh, uh, your vacation. Yeah, very simple. I mean, in earlier days, how did that work? A leave request. How did that work in earlier days? You had some piece of paper in your office. You had to do a leave request. Okay, you took this form. That was a standardized form. You fill in name, ID, uh, from when to when I want to have vacation my manager, you filled all these things in, you, you took this piece of paper, you ran to the HR department, and said, here is my leave request. The HR department made a copy of the request, one copy for the file, the other copy went to the manager. The manager got the file, uh, the, got the request, said, okay, I want to have some location, okay, fine, check, sign, made a copy, one for his file, one back to HR. HR took the approved, a request made a copy, one for the file, one for one for payroll, one for the manager, one for the employee, and then they spread it via post post, internal snail mail. Uh, and when I got back from my holiday, I got my request approved. <laughs> okay. That was much effort and took years. Yeah. And with something like this. Online, it's quite easy. You save hell a lot of money and you are, you're really much faster. So that's the idea of a very typical user system, administrative. It's a good example for our employee self-service. Okay. Um, now let's have a look at the very specific, uh, very specific HR thing. Let's talk about recruiting. Yeah. I mean... When you apply somewhere, yeah, you use the user interface where you apply via online form. Okay? You type in all the data, you upload your CV, you submit your application. Do you know what happens with that application? No, not at all. You don't have any clue. You submit it, 
and then you wait. But the back, the so-called back end, that what happens, yeah, that's it. Behind the website, behind what you can see, that's massive. Yeah, I'd like to give you a little bit of indication what happens in recruiting. Yeah, um, in recruiting, there is the manager. I'm the manager. I say, well, I have an open position which I need to be filled. I look at the organization management system. Okay, so okay, get this approved there. Then okay. That goes to the recruiter. The recruiter then makes a job posting. And that's really simplified. Yeah? They make a job posting. And they transmit the job posting to some online job boards. Me as an applicant, I can see the job posting and apply. I prepare an application. The application goes to the recruiter. The recruiter makes the pre-selection. And then with a short list, the manager has to look at the shortlist, the pre-selected, and makes again a pre-selection, which whom to invite to interview. Then, as a recruiter, I plan the interview. I run the interview. Complicated process. Then I make the selection together with the manager. Then we prepare the work contract, and we refer to the payroll system, and then it moves to onboarding. Very different steps in a recruiting process where very different roles are involved. Yeah? If you want to implement a process like this with a system like SuccessFactor, SAP, for instance, or Taleo Oracle, you really have to think about all these different steps. Who will do what along this process? And everything here, recruiting manager related to you don't see as an applicant. You don't know what happens there, but there happens a lot. Okay? It's an interesting job to work as a consultant in that area, helping companies to design the right recruiting processes and to, and to mirror these processes in a system. And this is how it then looks like. Okay? Um, just to give you some, some impressions. Uh, this is uh, part of the interview step. Yeah? I'm in an interview and I have my iPad or my tablet. PC, yeah? or my, my smartphone, and I do the interview with a candidate, and while I do the interview, I make my rating. Okay? Then it's in the system. Right? Or, as a manager, I get my shortlist. Yeah? I get the pre-selected application, then this looks like this. Yeah? I click on the candidate, see the application, I can make a decision. And I always can see the status of the different applications. Uh, or I have some, some mobile devices like this. Here I do my interview ratings immediately on the iPhone. I have my interview, let's say, on a career fair with someone of you. And I make my notes immediately. Take the picture. <laughs> yeah. This is how it goes. Yeah. Okay. This is a picture of the e-learning system. Whenever we talk about e-learning, e-recruiting, e-procurement, e-commerce, what does the e stand for? Huh? Electronic. It's more than this. Sorry. No. Internet. <laughs> e e internet. Internet. E-recruiting systems are systems to support recruiting with internet technology. E-learning means providing learning content, online courses, via a system. We have a system also in our university named Felix. Yeah. I don't use this. No. So you as a user, you have a portal. What is a portal? Also important term. The portal is your entrance as a user into the system. Yeah. The portal. Um, and you get personalized training offers. Personalization, also very important concept in that thing. If you go to Amazon.com, and I go to Amazon.com, will it look the same or will it look, will it look different? 
Do I get the same page as you? No. no. I get different offers. Why do I get different offers than you? It's personalized. Exactly. It's personalized. Based on my previous consumption habits, they offer me specific products. Why Google is always the same. It's not personalized. Right? Spiegel Online, it's not personalized. Right? But these systems are personalized. Because you are a sales representative, you get different courses offered than as an HR generalist or HR business partner. Okay. So you have the portal, you see all the offers, you can see your learning history, you can collaborate with others, you can use some tests. Okay. And behind this portal, there's a learning management system where an expert, now, now an expert is really maintaining all these trainings which are offered. Right? Uh, while behind this there might be a content management system behind every website there is a content management system sometimes highly complicated where you can maintain the content of a website in that case you can maintain the learning content can generate the learning content and some other things and sometimes external content is, is integrated into the whole system so again this is not something which you should learn by heart but you should understand that Behind what you see as a user, there are different layers. There are different things that, 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 that these systems allow to do. Okay? Maintaining the training content, the learning content, uh, the tra administer the training, uh, deliver the learning content, integrate external sources like literature databases or, or external provider of learning content. Okay? Now, this was a very short run around IT systems H in HR, right? And if you really want to see a complete picture of all the systems which are there and how, how relevant these systems are currently, then there's one picture which I at least want to share with you for, for one minute. It's the Gartner hype cycle. Have you heard about this? It's a very important concept. So, this is a slide which I want you to learn by heart. <laughs> this interesting concept. Gartner, Gartner, analyst, yeah, analyst. They 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 review the existing system and make some some reviews on existing systems, and they invented the hype cycle. That's a very interesting concept. The hype. What is hype? Yeah? Hype. Right? Yeah, what, what comes to your mind when you hear about hype? Yeah? What did you say? Something that people consider really cool and cutting edge. Right hype is something that now is really cool. Everybody wants it right now. And you know that in one year, this will be over. Yeah? Some ask, is Facebook a hype? When I ask, is Facebook a hype? What is the hype? My question. The question is, will it still be there in two years? Is it just a hype? Is it just that is something that is accepted now, but not in the future? We talk about hype. And the hype cycle describes how different solutions run through that. Uh, a solution is invented, and then it takes a while that it gains some acceptance in the market, and then uh, a solution, a system, an app is highly appreciated. Everybody wants it. It's the coolest stuff in the world. And we totally overestimate the value of something. Maybe we overestimate the value of Facebook. It's a hype. And in the future, it will cool down a little bit. And the idea is that when things cool down, they extremely cool down yeah, before they move to a normal level. <laughs> okay? That's the hype cycle. And every year, Gartner shows uh, how the different systems in HR, which are currently considered, which are on the market, where they are on this hype cycle. Video recruiting. You know what that is? In the future, when you apply somewhere, the company will ask you, okay, Mr. Applicant, here are seven questions. Please answer these seven questions uh, in a video. 
Yeah? You take the first question, why do you apply for this job? And you answer this question and record the video. Well, I apply because I don't know. Okay, next one. <laughs> what is your biggest strength? Ah, okay, question. I know my biggest strength is one. And then you take this video and you send it to the corporation. And then, in the company, this video is used to be shared in the team. Yeah? And it's voted by many people. Would you like to hire this person, yes or no? That's video recording. Eh? It's something which is on the hype side somewhere there. It's already there. More and more companies do this. Yeah? Gartner assumes that in the near future, uh, this will be really something which is considered by many, many companies. But then we will cool down and then it gets something normal. Look at this, employee self-service. We talked about this. Now it's really on a normal level. We don't overestimate this, we don't underestimate this. It's, it's, it's okay, it's useful, it's fine, yeah? Um, what else? Mobile. Mobile, we'll talk about this in a minute. Mobile human capital management. Yeah, in the last years, we totally overestimated the value of doing things mobile. Already in a phase where it cools down a little bit. Okay? Now, look at this. This is a very good, I mean, that's a very, very nice model, this hype cycle, to understand how things enter the market, how they get cool and then cool down. So, so get cool and then cool down. Yeah? Um, and also, it's a very good overview about the systems which are there. Right? Okay. Now, in the last few minutes, let's talk about some trends. And what I want you to see here is, I want you to understand these concepts. Because they are really dominant right now. Um, one thing is, what we really find is, bring your own device. That's the major trend. Bring your own device. That's the name of this trend. What does that mean? Bring your own device. I mean, when you work somewhere, yeah, you start working at Bosch, you have your nice iPad, you have your nice iPhone, and then you work at Bosch, and you have to use a Blackberry. <laughs> can't I use my iPhone? No, you can't. But you have to use a very, very company-specific mail system, which is ugly. The idea is that people use the system which they like because you more and more realize that you have better systems at home than at your workplace. <laughs> now the trend is really that you can use your system which you like. You bring your own device. Yeah? That's really a trend. We find this in many corporations. <coughs> then social. Social is a major trend. Using social media, so using, uh, using things like Sing, LinkedIn, uh, integrate all these things. I mean, you will find more and more companies. A good example is Audi. At Audi, you can, you can apply with your Xing or with your LinkedIn profile. In the application process, you are asked, do you have a LinkedIn profile? Yes. Would you like to apply with your LinkedIn profile? Then, so that you don't have to maintain all your CV info? Yes. Done. Okay. Social. Mobile, I talked about this. More and more things happen mobile. Yeah. Mobile, that's a major trend. Okay. Um, I do my interviews with a mobile. Uh, I'm a manager and I'm, I'm waiting for the boarding at the airport. And I look at the incoming application real quick. Oh, I got some new applications. Invite, reject, reject, invite. <laughs> Very easy. Mobile, I do it on the way somewhere. Um, I have some reporting which I can use immediately in a meeting. Yeah? Using mobile devices, tablet PCs, uh, smartphones, that's, that's really a major trend. But also for you, as an applicant maybe, you can apply via iPhone. Yeah? This is something that really happens more and more. Uh, that career websites are delivered on mobile devices 
more and more companies do this. Yeah. Okay, so that when you go to the career website of a company, you want to look at the jobs at a company, you don't have your use your smartphone and then and you have it in a mobile way. More and more companies do that. That's really a trend. What is cloud? Cloud computing. Have you ever heard? I mean that's really important. Very major trend. What is cloud? Have you heard this? iCloud? What is cloud? Information storage is not in your computer, but in a server. So the information you use is not stored on your device. It's stored where? You don't know. You don't know. In the cloud. Yeah? So, I make an entry here on my calendar. And after a second, I find the same entry on the same calendar on the iPad. And on the laptop. More and more, more companies maintain their HR data not on a server inside the company or on devices, but in a cloud. So that's a very good way to integrate data, to make usage of data wherever you are which, with, with, with very different devices. Yeah? Uh, big data. <clears throat> Have you heard this term? Big data. What is that? Still not so relevant in HR, but we also st we start talking about this. Big data. What is that? Yeah? It's generally that you maybe don't have too little or like, too much data and you have to somehow manage it and uh, get the important stuff out of it. That's it. We, do you know how many data you produce today? More than you can imagine. Huh? If you have a smartphone, sometimes wherever you are, it's registered. You produce data every second, even when you don't know. You post something, where did you post something? Where did you like something? Yeah? It's stored somewhere. Yeah? Every second, every minute we produce, everybody produces tons of data. Yeah? And that's a new world. So the idea is to make use of this data in a systematic way. Um, there are millions of people in the world, mil billions of people in the world, which travel, which use their car, and have their smartphone with them. And uh, Google is using this data about where you are and how fast you move to do what? Traffic. Traffic. Yeah. If you want to know whether there's a traffic jam, my, I mean, I use this, yeah? I, I immediately see where's a traffic jam, even when the traffic jam is in the midst of Schwenningen. I can see it. And how, how does the system know that there is a traffic jam? Because obviously the people who have their smartphone with them move slowly. And because there are many people who move slowly on this piece of the road, there must be a traffic jam. That's usage of data tons of data in a very structured way and to create value based on this. This is a, this is a, a future trend. Okay? So, this was a very fast uh, journey through this entire IT system. I hope that you get some, at least, some impressions about what HR systems can do. Okay? Thank you for today and we see us next week. structure. That's important because with this organizational structure you always can see which is the manager, who is the manager of whom. Why is that important to know in a system? Why is it important to know who is the manager of whom? Because managers sometimes make decisions upon what? About performance, appraisal, about salary, about the approval for, for a vacancy request all these kinds of things. So you have the entire organization mirrored in a system. Of course, the entire compensation thing. I mean, a pay slip is not calculated by hand. I mean, that's clear. It's not calculated via Excel. There are systems. 
Uh, one of the first solutions of SAP in that area in HR was really payroll. Yeah? Uh, calculating these monthly uh, um, paces. Yeah? Absence. Man manage the management of all the website of some of the major providers of uh, HR software. Success Factor was recently acquired by SAP. Very successful uh, uh, platform, a very successful uh, solution is delivered by Workday. Cornerstone, amazing. Yeah? Haufe Umant is a determined provider. Oracle recently acquired a leading provider named Taleo. Yeah? Go to their website, really. That's my recommendation here. And have a look at what they can do. Sometimes you find also demo systems. You will find um, videos, and so it's just set to get a little bit of feeling what these kind of systems do. I mean, you all know what office systems can do: Excel, PowerPoint, and so on. Yeah, and maybe you don't have a clue about. Okay, so one thing was the organization, the other thing comes into play is IT, information technology. The leading question for this session is, uh, I would like to share with you what are IT solutions in HR? What can they do? How do they look like? Uh, I'd like to share with you what are the difference between expert systems, user systems. Um, what are typical functionalities? Yeah, what are typical functionalities in recruiting, in learning, and other areas? And what are future trends? So this will not be a big chapter, but I'd like to share with you some ideas which you really should take home. Okay? Uh, the first thing I would like to ask you to do is have a look, really, on a, what HR systems can do. It would be good to have a little bit of understanding. Uh, one question in the last, the last HR uh, uh, exam was, give an example of an HR software and about some functionalities. Yeah, easy. If I would ask you, give an example of an app and what the app can do. You can easily answer this mm -hmm. question. I would like you to also be able to answer this question for HR mm -hmm. software. When you look at HR software, you you very often find kinds of overall models like this, the overall, overall architecture, so to speak, of, of AHR software. Um, let, let me say some words about some of these components, because uh, this is a very typical example. Um, you can maintain your organization. Yeah? You have a system where you really can maintain your entire Organization benefits, company cards, insurance, all these things. You need systems for doing this. Yeah? Um, performance here. I mean, you remember performance management, performance appraisal? Yeah? Employees are evaluated, reviewed on a yearly basis by the manager. This is done in a system, yeah? not on paper. And some companies it's done on paper, yes, but in modern organizations this is done in a system. Okay. Um, time tracking. Yeah. Uh, tracking uh, the the uh, when do the employees join the company, when do they leave the company on a daily basis. Yeah. And then they have different UI. What is a UI? User interface. Yeah, user interface, important term here. Yeah? They have 